This is a bush flying monster. Are you kidding me? 35 inch Alaska bush wheels, turbine in the nose, uh, overall performance design for short takeoff and landing or stall. Uh, it can lift more than its basic empty weight. It is a monster machine for the backcountry and it does an excellent job in the mountainous regions, especially here in South Central Alaska. The owner flies it up to 10,000, 12,000 feet for glacier landings. In a few minutes, you're up from sea level to, you know, 10, 12,000 feet effortlessly. So it climbs in 10 minutes to flight level 150. <laughs> it's very capable. It flies like a super cub. It gets you out of trouble with these 35 inch bush wheels in no time. And it creates a, just a really pleasurable flying experience. Good morning from Alaska. I'm here at the Fly Alaska Lodge which is a remote wilderness lodge located in the heart of North America's largest national park, the Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve. Established in 1980 at little over 13 million acres, the Wrangell St. Elias National Park and Preserve is larger than Yosemite, Yellowstone and Switzerland combined, including the 18,000 foot Mount St. Elias. This is Philip's summertime base from where he flies friends, family, visiting pilots to some of Alaska's most incredible and scenic backcountry locations. This includes landing on the nearby glaciers, going on fishing, camping, safari trips, and also taking visiting pilots on familiarization flights in the Pilatus Porter. But more about those familiarization flights in another video. In this video, I'm following Philip as he does his walk around pre flight inspection and points out some of the unique features of this Pilatus Porter. In these remote locations in Alaska, aviation is an integral part of everyday lifestyle and also the means by which people and services get delivered to these remote locations. Like, for example, here on the island of Kodiak, which is the second largest island in the United States. Many remote locations get served by seaplanes that operate from this uh, basin here in Kodiak. Philip maintains a fleet of several aircraft at his lodge. And depending on the mission, he'll fly any one of the Pilatus Porter, the Husky, Super Cub or one of the Cessnas. In addition to offering these uh, incredible outdoor adventures and excursions, Philip is also very involved in the local community, offering his air transportation services where there's a need. Here at 61 degrees northern latitude, which is the same latitude as Anchorage, we're not quite in the Arctic Circle, which is 66 degrees north, but during the long summer days, there's quite enough daylight hours to put this Pilatus Porter to good use. Come along as I follow Philip during his pre-flight inspection, his walk around, as he gets ready for yet another fun summer day flying here in the Alaska wilderness. Good morning, Philip. Good morning, Dion. What a beautiful morning. Absolutely gorgeous. You've already flown this morning. Oh, a lot of fun already. Yeah. You're going to show us a little bit about this airplane as you do the pre-flight and walk around. What an amazing aircraft, backcountry flying machine and just a very capable airplane for this kind of environment. You're very welcome. Uh, let's start with the pre-flight. I'm going to show you everything. How long have you owned this one? Since 2016. This is a, a Pratt. This is a Pratt & Whitney, a PT6-27 with 550 horsepower. Um, and that's a screwdriver, which comes with every airplane. It's specially designed for the Pilatus. Specially designed for the Porter. Yeah. Everything is specially made. This Porter is built like a Swiss watch, like a Rolex. I can imagine that. I have no idea how the people did this. They designed it 1958 and went into production 1960. And it's one of the best bush planes of the world. 
Philip Ferry Deesporter all the way out of Switzerland across the North Atlantic to Alaska. And I'll ask him about that a little bit later. But first, back to the pre-flight. There's so much space behind the engine here. Look at the amount of space behind the, in the cowl. And so you can tell us why the engine is so far forward. It was designed for a piston, like coming 480, 540 geared. And the airplane was never a really good performing airplanes. I don't like it too much with the piston, but with the, with the PT-6, it's awesome. And so now to adjust for the CG, with the lighter turbine, it needs to be much farther forward Absolutely as well. Absolutely correct. So I'm just checking the cowling. You have to check the oil. Actually, 10 minutes after the, air and the engine was running, now it's stabilized. You see two. Mm -hmm. And actually, this turbine, you don't check in the morning. You check it after 10 minutes is running. Mm. And if there are no leaks, which I'm checking right now, I can see not one drop, nothing, mm, you're fine to go. I always keep my screwdriver in my pocket, in my right pocket, so I not forget it. Because you're, if you don't close it, it's dangerous, actually. Philip, you ferried this porter all the way from Switzerland to Alaska. Can you tell us a little bit about this transatlantic ferry? I flew this plane over from Switzerland. Um, this was my flight plane. I took off from Switzerland. First stop was Vic in Scotland. Then we flew to Reykjavik. Mid fuel. Then actually we fuel fly up here and uh, Sandersturm Fjord, Igaluit, and Yellowknife, and here. Uh, it was five days, 44 hours. Wow. And, and these that are was the, the stops plan you stops. Made. Let, let okay. it point it like this way. Mm -hmm. But we, we made a little bit of change up here because the mm -hmm. weather was so nice. Mm -hmm. It was. What time of the year was, was that? Not April, oh, yeah. April before Valdez. Mm -hmm. Here there's a to unlock. It's very nice, very well done. So, just to check it. Control here. lock, like a wind, gust, wind, wind lock? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have different kind of wind locks. Mm -hmm. This is the easiest way for store it overnight. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Let's go over here. So this port is super light. I made it for myself. Um, it has empty weight, 1,233 kilograms, and the maximum take of weight is 2,800 kilograms. So it can hold way more than its own weight. Tell us a little bit about the landing gear. The 35 inch tires are beautiful on this airplane because the angle of attack is now different. It's much steeper mm. and we fly into really rough airstrips, mm. like Jake's bar. That's standard, standard. Um, this one has skis. So this, that's the, um, the accumulator for the skis. It's quite easy to change from skis to wheels. Mm. Absolutely standard, but everything you see on this airplane is overhauled at Pilatus standard 14 years standard and it was completely disassembled, all NDT, very high standard. So these are 35s, they work very nice, they actually uh, bush wheels for the Beaver and a special 10 inch wheel from Behringer. Hey, let's see here. Okay, we will be uh, a party of um, Three, I guess. So, pilot, co-pilot, and three packs. So we leave. We can put actually one seat out if we want. The nice thing about it, we just do this. It goes very simple. That's that's a nice thing. Seat comes out, and you can store all six seats in here. So you can carry freight or you can carry passengers on one leg. Freight and the other one passengers. 
So I'll show you how this goes. Oh, and it's secured already. And this is it. No movement, absolutely gorgeous. On this port, there's not one screw too much or too less. Everything fits. This handle is actually for the skydiver. You, the, the, this is a skydiver kit. So when the skydiver jump out, they don't get stuck on the handle. That's standard. So the, as this is an H4, it has this big fin for stabilization. We have a huge elevator and the whole thing is moving like on a Super Cup. That's, a, that's not a stone guard. That's a, a guard for, for, for the skydiver. Huge elevator. Uh, a critical part on the port is always the design of the tail wheel. So if you fly in an environment like this, you grease it every day. It's very expensive on the one hand side and on the other side there are brushings in there and if the dust from the turbine from the engine fills it, it's like, yes, it's bad for it. Good. So, we do have big doors. We can load it from both sides. There's one thing more I would like to show you. Okay, one thing which is awesome about this porter, about every porter, this is a standard. You have a trap door. Look at this. I open here. You can make them closer and have a look. It's 660 pounds or 300 kilograms. And I can open it in flight, of course. Off we go, you ready? Go! Open. So I can drop fish. I can drop paragliders through this hole. Whatever you want. And the closing thing, I close it now. And it works like a, a Swiss watch, like a Rolex. Everything is designed. Uh, I've, I'm around airplanes since 40 years. And I fly Super Cups, I fly Huskies, I fly Shock Cups, I fly Highlanders, all kind of bush planes. But this one is, I don't know how they did it, 1960 or 1958. But somehow it flies like a super cup, behaves like a super cup, it's just big. So. And again, that's 300 kilograms of load that you can put on those doors. Yes, absolutely. That's incredible. That's a lot. Do you do that often where you have to d drop supplies to villagers or people on the ground? Very, very seldom. But you have the capability to do that? Yes. And it's a standard. You only can buy it like this. So not, not so much for, for supplies here in Alaska, but more uh, skydivers. That one is out. Skydivers. Um, yes. Use that all the time? No, they use, no, they, no. They use it because it's a, a Just, novelty for them? Yes, that's, uh, that's something special. <laughs> so I'm preparing everything from the packs. You can load into the airplanes from both sides. Mm. That's nice. Mm. We put in snow machines. We put in steels. We put in ATVs. It's a big ca cargo room. You're going to show us a little bit inside on the panel? Absolutely. Okay. As this is a very light porter, um, uh, most of them is standard. Uh, this one has manual flaps. Uh, all the new one has electrical flaps. Mm -hmm. All the new one has beautiful Garmin mm -hmm. uh, 950. And, um, but this is a very, very light one. And guys, as you know, 
bush flying, it's all about weight. The light it is, I think this is the lightest one in the world. Yeah, so like you mentioned, the electrical flap system came out, so you're yes. saving all of that weight. And there's other <laughs> What advantage. other weight saving, uh, weight -saving uh, uh, adjustments did you make? There is not one wire in this airplane which is too much. <laughs> Normally the people put in ADF and they leave yeah. it in there and all the wires are in there. There's nothing, I just, there's nothing. Nothing optional. And I'm gonna show you the cockpit and the hardest thing actually is to climb in. Then you hold left feet, you hold yourself in and get in and you're in. And this is amazing. I teach in this porter and everybody says, oh, this feels like a glove. It just fits, everything is on the correct spot. Everything is perfect. I made as little as um, changes as possible. Standard, they're G5s, not standard. Um, standard instruments, this is still counting in liters. Everything on this airplane is a metric. Um, all these are standard. Of course, I have an iPad here and I have a uh, GTX uh, 345 and a Garmin, but this is standard, all of them are standard. The fuel tanks are standard. Uh, uh, here you can see the, the brakes, a uh, Behringer, they work very well. Uh, the, the parking brake is working well. That's the ski pump. So the Not sure again, that's? That's the ski pump. Oh, okay. So you can change from wheels to skis and you drive the skis down. And on the fuel condition, or the, the, yeah, the, the fuel condition, um, you also have the low idle and high idle. Mm -hmm. And what is the procedure for, for taxiing versus takeoff? Do you always take off and land with high idle or does it not matter? High idle, low idle? For a short field takeoff, I use a low idle in approach. Mm. Um, and a uh, standard is high idle mm. for, uh, for takeoff. Mm. So I'm gonna show you a novelty, and this is the manual flaps. This is the trim. You see the chain here? It looks funny, but it works really nice. And on this handle, that's the flaps. I go, there's an, a manual, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and now I'm in takeoff position. And that's landing. Okay. And you see now there are slotted flaps. Very efficient. Very efficient. I'm gonna go back. Yeah. Oh, this is your takeoff position. Yeah, that's takeoff position, sir. And uh, you mentioned something about the control surfaces are, the parts are interchangeable, so the flaps can be interchanged with the ailerons? Um, the flaps cannot be interchangeable with the ailerons, but each flap can be changed with each flap. Okay. So we have so four, no parts, four parts of flaps, yeah. and you can change any part of the flap. So this makes field replacement very easy. Yes. You don't have to have a specific left or a right side. Absolutely. So the people who designed this airplane were, some of them were mechanics, so they would like to have it as simple as possible. I'm gonna show you the trim. We're gonna go full down. We're gonna go full up. And there's, like you, I think you mentioned before, there's no hydraulics, no electrical control. No. Is there an op option for any other uh, hydraulics? Negative, mm. only the flaps and the trim. Mm. There's only one fuel cutoff, one fuel lever, mm -hmm. that's it. And this actually, we call it the Jausenbrettli, Swiss German. And that's where you put your lunch in. <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's actually sturdy enough, it's designed to carry a little bit of a load. Absolutely, you can, put, you can sit on here, it's a, a part of the structure. And we always, as a pilots, you know, you have to drink something and you have to have lunch. So we put the uh, Jausen Bretli. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's incredible. What is the, the so that's the, uh, the brake? Um, uh, the brakes. <coughs> controls? Yes, <coughs> on the toes. 
No, no, just this side in the middle. That adjustment knob. Ah, yeah, yeah. You can you cannot adjust the the the, the, the seats and this one, but you can adjust the pedals. Yeah. So you see now, mm. full forward for bigger people, mm. and for small people like me, mm. it's like this. And yeah, that's the the lock. Mm. Yes. So this one is easy. And this in the middle here? That's the ski pump. Okay, the ski pump and it's hyd hydraulics. That has the hydraulics. And a reservoir. Very cool. I hope I gave you an overview about this beautiful porter. It's really a bush plane. So if you want to come to fly, you're more than welcome. I and my guys are refurbishing porters. We only do porters. And my least experienced guy has 20 years on type. So every screw you find in this port is original. There's not one not original screw. And all the parts are coming directly from Pilatus. You can still buy all the parts, every screw you say, I want to have, I don't know, I want to have this handle. And then you pull up the parts catalog and they're gonna send you this handle within the next day. And even though Pilatus officially stopped the production, they will continue to support the <coughs> the maintenance for how many years? 30 years at least. 30 years. Three zero years. So finding replacement parts or any kind of maintenance should never be a problem? It's never a problem. You can order them right now at the Pilatus factory and tomorrow they're going to ship it out. Like for the 12 and the 24 and all the military airplanes Pilatus has. What do you guys think of the Pilatus PC-6? Quite the machine for the bush in the backcountry, right? It's fascinating to see how pilots and flight crews put these to work, especially in uh, backcountry locations like, uh, like Alaska here, uh, where most of the population lives off of the road system, which means uh, accessibility and servicing these communities uh, highly depend on uh, aerial transportation and delivered by airplanes, not all as big as this one, uh, but bush planes and bush pilots that uh, put their lives on, on the line to service these communities in, in sometimes very, very tough weather and climatic conditions. Uh, this one does some really, really interesting work here in McCarthy, South Central Alaska. And hopefully I can find more like this, uh, more examples of bush aircraft and their pilots to show you guys exactly how these machines are put to work and, and doing good stuff for the community as well as the neighboring areas in uh, the south central part of Alaska. There's uh, some fascinating flying that happens in, in uh, these backcountry locations. So what do you think of the Pilatus Porter PC-6? Thanks very much for watching. If you watched until now, hopefully you'll come back and see what else I can find in this region of the world in terms of backcountry flying and interesting applications of uh, aviation. Seven trolley on the slide. Five seven one tango approved as requested. West cleared to land number two. Yeah, he's short final now. No factor for you. Zero seven trolley west clear for takeoff. Early turnout approved for the segment. Zero seven trolley's on the slide. Okay, I think I see you. Yeah, I just got Bravo with me. She'll be fine. Can we all come? Okay, great. Also at the uh, figure eight lake, one thousand seven hundred northeast.